have been so happy to drop a couple of gems on who will be featured as our special guest. So I am so happy to announce the most beautiful, um, intelligent Miss Hope Wiseman. So she is, you know, everyone should do a bit of cheers, but not only that, I wanted to let you guys know that she is the youngest Black female dispensary owner, not only in Maryland, but in the entire United States of America. So that's another cheers to you, Miss Hope Wiseman, and also your co-owners. And also a lot of you guys have been asking for those who haven't been to the dispensary or considering getting a medical cannabis card to um, go to the dispensary about like what the process is and so forth. So in our previous um, Cannabis 101 series, I have answered those questions. So feel free to go back to the YouTube channel and listen um, to those. And, but for those who have gotten a medical cannabis card in Maryland and what and want to know about what to expect about the dispensary experience, how to be prepared, um, what is the current process since COVID, pandemic have came along and so much more. I always love to be interactive. So feel free to post your comments and questions. And all of those who are tuning here live, you receive a special gift. So at the end, I um, make sure that you send me your um, emails or um, text me your email so that I could provide you a, um, a special gift for all of those who um, have attended today live and also virtually. It's a 24 hour gift, so you have to hop on it. So, without further ado, here is Miss Hope Wiseman, owner of Marion Maine Medical Dispensary located in Capitol Heights, Maryland. So, welcome, Hope. <laughs> Thanks, Melinda. Thanks so much for having me on today. Yes, Welcome. I mean, I'm so happy to support a fellow um, Black business. Yes. And today, well, this week you're celebrating your two week anniversary. So, yes. what, yes, you know, two year anniversary. Yes. yes. So, what better time is that? So, tell everyone more about yourself and yes. your dispensary and so forth. Definitely. So yes, like Melinda said, my name is Hope Wiseman. I was born and raised in Prince George's County, where Mary and Maine now is. Um, and I went away to school in Atlanta, Georgia. I attended Spelman College. I graduated with a degree in economics and I spent most of my summers when I was in college and then ended up full time at an investment bank. Um, and I stayed in Atlanta. I loved it there. But uh, around the time right after I graduated was when I really started to get serious about the cannabis industry. Um, I realized the, the huge economic opportunity this industry would provide. And, you know, I knew as a Black woman who grew up in a household where the talk about generational wealth and entrepreneurship Two very different things. You don't have to be an entrepreneur in order to build generational wealth. Just want to say that. But those two topics were, were topics that um, were very normal in my household. So, you know, I grew up thinking about those two things often. I knew I wanted to own my own business, whether it was a secondary um, thing to my actual career or if it would become my career, I knew I wanted to own my own business one day. I also knew that I wanted to build a legacy for my family through business. Um, and I wanted to be able to pass it down and really create generational wealth for my family because my family, although um, has they've been very successful, that's not something that we've really thought about. And I think the same holds true in a lot of black households. Um, so for me, I saw the opportunity of the cannabis industry um, as more than just getting into the industry because of the medicinal benefits, which I began to really understand much more later. But at the time when I first got into the industry, I really was um, just intrigued by 
the fact that this was an emerging industry, it was still on the ground floor level, um, and that I had an opportunity to get in at that point. Um, you know, just history shows that when you are able to get in at the ground floor level of something, you're often able or you just have a better probability of becoming successful, um, as well as you're kind of avoiding some of the, the higher barriers to in, uh, entry that ended up coming, um, you know, for a lot of people trying to enter the industry today. So that's kind of, you know, where we started. And I, you know, I just decided to the state of Maryland after I really understood kind of how the regulatory framework um, was set up. Um, and I went to my mother, who is my now business partner, um, but I went to her and pitched the idea of applying for one of these licenses. And now here we are. Um, and that was in 2014. So yeah, that was a long time ago. Wow. Right. It, so how long did that process take um, as far as, you know, from the application to getting the keys um, to yeah. your dispensary? Um, so we applied in 2015. In 2014, at that point, the regulations had been published. Um, so they were law. They were signed in. Uh, it was at one point a bill voted in, signed into law. So we knew kind of what the process would look like from a regulatory standpoint. Um, and we began to prepare in 2014. The application was actually released in 2015. Uh, we had 45 days to respond. Uh, it takes much longer than 45 days to uh, get an application ready, guys. So you have to have been preparing um, in advance. But we uh, applied then. So that was in November of 2015. It took over a year for them to award licenses. It was supposed to be three months, uh, but we were awarded our dispensary license in December of 2016. Um, from there, uh, we went through a lot of uh, growing pains that a lot of business owners understand when they're trying to open, um, finding a location. And then within cannabis, you have extra restrictions. Um, in Maryland, every state is different, but in Maryland, the only uh, jurisdiction that the local municipalities have over cannabis is through zoning. So if, if a local county did not want cannabis in their county, the only thing they could do about it, it was state mandated. You know, some states gave uh, local municipalities control over that but not in Maryland. So the only thing they could do was make the zoning damn near impossible to navigate, which two counties kind of did. And um, that was uh, Prince George's County and Anne Arundel County. So mm -hmm. um, Prince George's County was very difficult to navigate from that perspective. It was hard to locate a property that fit <laughs> within the zoning regulations that we were subject to. Um, so it took about um, two years, you know, for us to find a location and then go through the build out, which is a whole process in itself, you know, getting permits and and actually doing the work. Um, and then we opened in September of 2018. So it was a process from 2014 to 2018. Wonderful. So you spoke about zoning and um, I did a little research at like years ago, black people were forbidden to be in that area. So was there like yeah. any kickbacks um, now um, as far as, you know, being in the Hampton Mall area or is it just, you know, um, a great celebration at once they did not allow black people in that area. And then you are a young black woman opening a business um, in an area that used to forbid us colored people to yeah. be. Um, no, no pushback really from that angle. And I'd say that's because Prince George's County has really changed since then. You know, now we are the most affluent Black county or one of the most affluent Black counties in the United States. Um, so it's kind of flip-flopped a little bit. You know, before they didn't want us in PG and now, because PG is historically, you know, an agricultural Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, county. So they didn't want us here. 
And now, you know, this is where we are thriving at. So I think that it was definitely the latter. It was a celebration. Everyone was very excited to see us there, happy that we were there um, and not some outsider, you know, um, and they're just happy to see us begin to build our business. So now what with this accomplishment, um, has it really resonated like you being the youngest black owner, I know you get asked this question a whole lot because yeah. you know you're in our history books now, especially in the cannabis history book. So how do you feel about that? You know, I have my head down and I'm doing the work. Uh, this is not anywhere near the end of my story. So this is like the very beginning. This is, I mean. I'm, I'm people, you know, my, my therapists and some of my close friends tell me that I'm like way too hard on myself, but I think part of it is, is what makes me great. Um, I'm not impressed with myself right now, you know, so I, I am thankful and I'm proud to represent what I represent right now, but I'm not impressed with myself. I have so much more work to do. Um, and I just, I, I can't wait, uh, to be able to, um, really put my hand down and help other people. I feel like that's where I really want to be able to get. I, I can help people on a small scale now, but I can't wait until it's on a much larger scale. So I, like I said, I did, my head is down and I'm ready to, to get to that point. Great. So um, for those who are now tuning in, we have Miss Hope Wiseman, the youngest of female Black dispensary owner in the entire United States of America. And we went back on the history of um, her having to, you know, the application process with the dispensary and a couple of hurdles and so forth. Now we're going to turn the tables on to what do we need to know before we go to the dispensary? So Hope, can you um, tell us like some tips and things that we need to know before, um, before going to um, a medical cannabis dispensary? Well, the first is probably super obvious to you and I, but you know, I realize not to everybody because we get so many walk-ins a day. You must have a medical card first. Um, first and foremost. So yeah, the process in Maryland is uh, not too strenuous. And um, I'm sure Melinda can tell you all about that. Um, but yeah, so you must have a medical card. Um, I'd say the next thing is to really understand what your goals are. Why are you uh, seeking to use cannabis? And if it's for, you know, although this is a medical facility, but if it's just for relaxation and kind of just to wind down after work, that's one thing. And then if it's for, you know, specific ailments that you're experiencing, that's another. So make sure that you understand exactly why you're trying to uh, use cannabis and what uh, feeling you're trying to achieve from that. Um, the next thing I'd say is if you're on any current medications to just be aware of how they could possibly interact. Um, and your doctor should be able to let you know. And some um, bud tenders, as we call them in my store, we call them experience agents, but the people who help you at the dispensary will be able to speak to this to an extent. And the medical directors at dispensaries will be able to speak to this um, uh, to an extent. But yes, you can't hold the, the bud tenders uh, mm -hmm. liable for that because they aren't doctors. So that is another thing. And then I'd say um, the next thing is just to come with questions. You know, anything that you're wondering, anything that you've heard, um, uh, ask someone that really knows so we can dispel um, some of these myths and, and the things that create stigma around the plant. Um, please ask and, and don't just assume things because you're probably wrong and you're probably <laughs> helping to perpetuate the stigma. So please um, come with questions and uh, definitely trust your bud tender. And I think it's really important um, to kind of go to different shops and, and find people that you can get along with. I, of course, want you to shop with us at Marion, Maine. But if you're just not having the experience that you'd like, you know, find another shop that can really answer the questions that you'd like. But I think everyone would have an awesome experience at Marion, Maine. I agree, um, because most dispensaries that have the basic information on about the endocannabinoid system, cannabinoids and terpenes, and so forth, and 
I wouldn't say, you know, if they're not having a good experience, you know, probably try someone else, but maybe uh, you might click with another um, dispensary representative. So yeah. maybe this person might um, not have answered all your questions, but I'm sure someone there um, could be able to further assist you. Yeah. And um, so another question that um, I have received are, what type of products do you have at the dispensary, you know, different consumption um, methods? And what would you like tell the novice um, person to the more experienced person? So I know I asked a couple of questions and I'm, I, I will, I could reiterate it later. So yes, yeah, make sure I hit on the hit different the products. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So products, um, one of the uh, biggest misconceptions I think about dispensaries is that they only have flour. You know, that's, that's not the case. We're not like your neighborhood pharmacist that you are used to going to. Um, so we have, um, yes, we have dried flour, um, smokable flour, and we do pre-rolls and all those things. Yes. But we also have tinctures, um, which are like drops that you would put under your tongue or some people put them in their drinks or smoothies. Um, we also have uh, topicals. So these would be lotions or salves. Um, we have transdermal patches. Uh, we have vape cartridges. Um, these were in the news pretty heavy last year and it was mainly for um, illicit market uh, cartridges that were being um, contaminated using uh, vitamin E to essentially cut the oil. Um, not necessarily from the legal market, but still had an impact on our industry um, because people wanted to understand more what vape cartridges were. So we have vape cartridges. Um, we have other forms of concentrates. Um, and if you don't know what concentrates are, pretty much it's when you extract the THC and CBD and CBN and CBG, all the cannabinoids out of the plant. And um, you can make it in multiple different varieties, but you're extracting them and purifying them essentially. Um, so we have shatter, wax, uh, resin, butter, sugar, diamonds, whatever you wanna call uh, any of those things and in all the different forms, we have concentrates. Um, we also have edibles um, in the form of capsules, tablets, as well as gummies or trochies or um, kind of a taffy. Um, we have some drinks. Um, I mean, we have the full gamut. We also sell some CBD products that are derived from hemp as well, which you don't need a medical card to purchase. Excellent. So for those who are against smoking, because I know that's a lot of things, but like, oh, I don't want to use cannabis because I don't smoke. So there are other options besides smoking the dried flour or sometimes people instead of flour, they say bud or weed or whatever. But in the cannabis industry, we call it a flower. Um, and there's topicals, ingestibles, and all of that. So um, at Mary and Maine, they have several different products to meet your um, every need and the way how you want to consume. And also um, it being discreet, even like as a mint. Um, so being very discreet as you use your product. Now, so... With um, now that we know like different consumption methods, what about those who um, are like hesitant going to the dispensary? Can you talk about a little about their like the privacy? Um, yeah. yeah. So um, especially right now during COVID, this is your time to shine, introverts. Um, we right now. Um, are only allowing a certain amount of people in the store at a time. So in our actual area where we're dispensing as well as our waiting area. Um, we've also uh, been allowed to, by the state commission, we've been allowed to begin uh, curbside sales. So you can order online, you can drive up, go into a parking space, call the store, let us know you're here and we can just bring your order right out to you and you can pay us right there in the car. You never even have to go inside. So this is extremely discreet. We've also partnered with a delivery partner that can deliver to your home. Um, they deliver within three to four hours of uh, your actual order. Um, it's called High Road. 
So you can download uh, their app off of the App Store. But yeah, we're a partner with High Road. So you can um, get your cannabis delivered to your home, as well as the fact is you can have a, a caregiver who can purchase cannabis for you, actually. Um, they will have a card themselves, um, but it will be linked to your name and to your allotment and they will be able to purchase cannabis for you if you do not want to come to the store. So we're also subject to HIPAA regulations. We cannot discuss your use or um, anything you discuss with us uh, regarding your health with anyone else. Um, so I'm excited to be able to um, offer people that type of security and privacy uh, as they explore cannabis. Excellent. So that is very helpful for those who still want to be discreet, also mm -hmm. practice social distancing and um, or who have um, some health conditions that um, prohibits them from getting like out of their car and going. And so Hope, you also mentioned about um, caregivers. And for those who do not know what a caregiver is, is someone who acts on your behalf when picking up your products. It's just like if you go to a pharmacy and you ask your child or spouse to get your products for you, you gave them authorization with Maryland Medical Cannabis Commission by uh, creating an account and linking your caregiver account to that patient who has um, received their medical um, cannabis number, their MMCC um, issued number, and they are able to pick out the, um, pick up the products for you for that patient. It's not for you, so don't say because I'm picking up your product, you're gonna, you know, give me an eighth or a gummy or something. You can't do that because it's specifically for the patient. And for those who um, are not able to go to the dispensary, there are delivery options. So um, there is a couple hour window to receive your products, but it is great that Marion, Maine has um, that option to meet everyone where they are. So um, another question is, um, and this will be one of the last questions. Do you have any like tips for um, newbies or those yeah. who are on the fence about um, considering medical cannabis as their option? Like they have all these health issues and they said, oh, they tried everything. Um, what has been like um, your testimonials on different health issues and how they um, have helped um, the people who are using cannabis medicinally? You know, I, I can't wait until we have more research, uh, scientifically backed research on cannabis, because, you know, we hear all these stories and about how cannabis helps people. And then I'm, we, we just want to understand the science behind it. Right. We understand the endocannabinoid system and that gives us a little insight, but we don't really get how all of this works. So one of the latest stories that I've heard um, from a patient of ours that really just impressed me was I have a patient that just recently had a leg amputated and there, and if anyone knows anything about amputees, they experience, especially um, in the very beginning, they experience phantom pain pretty bad. And phantom pain is pretty much where the limb that was removed, they still feel pain in that limb um, that is no longer there. So I, I'm, I'm sure you can imagine um, the mental toughness. It, it is one to just lose a limb, but then to have to feel it when it's not there mm -hmm. anymore. Um, it drives people crazy and it hurts. So um, I had a patient that recently told me a, a high THC drop. Uh, so it was, it's a tincture that he takes, um, almost alleviates that pain for him. And that was really amazing to me. I mean, I've heard stories, so many different kinds of stories. You've hear, heard people saying that cannabis has begun to reverse their cancer, um, shrink tumors. Um, you've heard people say that uh, cannabis can stop seizures, um, even in young children with high dosage of CBD, which does not give you the euphoric high effect that THC gives you. Um, you know, I've myself, when I have headaches, the first thing I go do is overload on CBD. 
I'll take like 2000 milligrams of, T- of CBD at one time and it knocks my headache out. Um, that's a lot of CBD though, guys. Uh, <laughs> just letting you know, um, it's expensive. Um, but I'll do that. And instead of uh, ibuprofen, and it knocks my head, my headaches out. So I think that cannabis is a really amazing plant that we don't understand fully yet. And I think um, right now it's a lot of trial and error and learning yourself, um, but it works. And I think that it's something that everyone should try if they're experiencing any type of um, especially chronic pain. Um, there's a lot of other conditions, but I know almost one, one, every one in three Americans experiences some type of chronic pain. So if you're experiencing that, and especially if you have not found relief with anything else, or if you're on a lot of prescription medication, I encourage you to try cannabis, see how it affects your body, probably in multiple different ways it will give you effects um, figure this out. You know, this is something that as, um, an experience agent, I tell my, uh, my people to really coach people on that, get to know, uh, your patients and help them understand how the medicine that they're buying is affecting their bodies. Thank you. And for those who have tuned in halfway in our Zoom at Noon series, we have our special guest, Miss Beautiful Hope Wiseman, which is the owner of Mary and Maine a Medical Dispensary located in Capitol Heights, Maryland. And we have went over, you know, her early on struggles when um, filling out the application to when the doors open. We talked about um, what to expect at the dispensary and the different products there. And now we're going to go and conclude this Zoom at noon um, as we highlight her two year anniversary. That's right. Mm-hmm. Marion Maine has was established and opened their doors. September of 2018. So all this week, they have been celebrating their two-year anniversary. So Hope, can you tell um, everyone um, like um, how to continue to celebrate um, yeah. with you for the rest of the week and any events? Definitely. So we have so much going on, guys. Um, first thing you can do is tune in tonight and tomorrow night at 6 p.m. Um, on our Facebook We are going live. We have a really awesome broadcast. And tonight we'll have representatives from Delegate Barnes, who is the chairman of the Legislative Black Caucus here in Maryland and our representative in District 25, where Marion Maine is located, Mm -hmm. as well as Aisha, the state's attorney for Prince George's County, Aisha Brave Boy. Um, We'll have her, her, her herself, as well as representatives from her office speaking about an expungement clinic that we are having this weekend, which I'll get to in a second. Um, And then tomorrow night, we're having a fireside chat with myself and the other two co-founders, my mother and Dr. Larry Bryant. Um, So you'll get to know us a little bit more and hear a little bit more about our journey uh, and and what it's like and what the future will hold for Marion Maine. And then Saturday is the big day. Um, We are having our Uh, our two-year celebration at the store with a huge community event. We will have SLK Health Services um, doing free HIV testing because in Prince George's County, uh, we are leading in the state of Maryland in new HIV cases in Prince George's County and Capitol Heights is leading within the county. So we need to come out. We need to get tested. We need to know our status. Um, we're also, SLK is also hosting free haircuts for the first 25 participants. Um, we'll have a DJ out there. We're going to have a voter registration table. Um, we are going to have our expungement clinic that I was just mentioning. Um, Delegate Barnes and state's attorney Aisha Brave Boy will be there. Um, and we'll have about eight to 10 attorneys there um, expunging people's records. So if you're interested in learning more about the expungement fair or about uh, the celebration as a whole, um, please visit us at marionmain.com. Uh, join us on Saturday from 11 to 5 p.m. That's when the expungement clinic, as well as all of the other vendors will be out there Friday, um, tomorrow from 12 to 4, we host our our farmer's market, which we host weekly. Please come out to our farmer's market, shop with our vendors who are all local and all Black. 
Um, and then the last thing we're doing to celebrate is I am uh, launching a uh, course. So I'm starting my course with a very much so free but full of value uh, webinar uh, tomorrow night at 7 p.m. So right after uh, the live broadcast with my owners, you can uh, go right over uh, to our webinar where I will be giving you 10 secrets um, to the application process and the licensing mm -hmm. process for cannabis. So if you're interested, no matter what state you're in, um, if you're interested in getting into the cannabis industry on the plant touching side, you can sign up for the webinar at learnwithhope.org. Learnwithhope.org. So that'll be tomorrow night at 7 p.m. right after our 6 p.m. broadcast on our Facebook Live. Wonderful. And also for those who missed the previous um, live broadcast on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, you could go back on Mary and Maine's page to watch it. Um, so they, she posted a lot of great information during the previous broadcast, and I was very happy to be on the Tuesday one talking about how to get a medical cannabis card in Maryland. Yeah. And um, so, Miss Hope, how can we find you on social media? Definitely. So you can follow Mary and Maine at maryandmain.com. That is M A R Y A N D M A I N. And then if you want to follow me and all the many projects I'm working on, I post a lot of inspirational content as well as a lot of informative content around the cannabis industry and business and entrepreneurship as a whole, um, as well as content about generational wealth and financial literacy. So if you're interested in any of those topics, Topics, you can follow me at I am hope so dope. That's it. Um, I am hope so dope on Instagram. I'm pretty active there. Wonderful. So you guys heard all this information from Hope Wiseman, the youngest Black dispensary owner in America. And you could follow her on social media on Marion May and also at I am hope so dope. Yeah. I love that name. <laughs> and <laughs> so thank you everyone for tuning in and for all the, those who have tuned in live as well as virtually later, I have a 24 hour gift that I will send to you. So you guys have to send me um, your contact information um, at Mary, info at marycarewellness.com or text me directly at 240-206-7004 and I will send you my special gift. And for all of those who brought their um, friends and family members, I have an extra special bonus that I'll be sending out to you that is also valid for 24 hours. So thank you all for joining us for our weekly Zoom at noon, where we highlight anything between health, wellness, fitness, weight loss, and medical cannabis. And you could feel free to watch our previous videos on Mary Care Wellness YouTube channel, which um, have a lot of different short and long videos that might answer your everyday questions about medical cannabis and health and wellness and so forth. And I look forward to seeing you next week um, for our weekly Zoom at noon um, session and follow Mary Care Wellness at Mary Care on all social media platforms on Mary Care Wellness um, and also on Twitter at X Mary Care. So thank you everyone. And until next time, be blessed and be happy. Enjoy the rest of your day.